AI-generated models aren't really anything new. They've been around for a little while, and even though Meshi is probably the biggest one here, there are still a couple examples. It's just a quick Google search. There's a, a bunch of different services that do text prompts to 3D models, and these are cool and all, but the one of the frustrations is that you now have to learn this whole new tool to your pipeline, and each one has a different service fee, and just kind of annoying to keep track of all this. So Adobe pretty quietly just released a new update to Stager, where it is text prompt to 3D AI generated models within Stager. So you, if you have the Substance 3D collection already, you have this, there's no extra fees or nothing. And I'll actually go ahead and show you that now. So if you open Stager here, it's this new tab here on the left and pretty self-explanatory really. Each one of these is a different AI generated feature and to actually generate the model is here on the top. And I'll just go ahead and put something simple like frog and generate that. And you'll see here on the bottom left, I got a couple examples that it generated. So we'll just click on one of them and you will see it made a frog. And you can just scoot it over to the side if you want to click on a different one. And so, I mean, easy as that, I got a bunch of frog models here in Stager. And if I wanted to go into the material section, you'll see it's only generating a color. So, you know, be it roughness or normal maps or whatever, you have to generate that yourself. But for like a starting point, this is pretty solid. If I just needed a quick frog, be it like in concept art or something, this would be really powerful and quick. Um, and then if I wanted to get a little more specific with it, you know, as you can imagine, I'll scoot this guy over and I'll just say black frog, you know, I type in as many details as you like to get more specific with what you're looking for. And there you go couple more black frogs and you know keep getting as detailed as you like one of the things i noticed is if you go back into this section the 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 second option and the third option here they're pretty self-explanatory but if i click into one of them they each have a settings section and these options here color tone lighting and camera i guess not so much camera angle uh but these settings will transfer from this section we are in right now to the text to 3d section so if i go in color and tone and say pastel i, I don't know like if, if you wanted some kind of like really guide the 3d generator let me move this frog out of the way uh, so uh, you can see i have one setting set so it's currently on pastel and then i'll go back to my text to 3d and so now if i say frog you can see a bunch of these options generated and they're all pastel. So you probably could just say pastel in here, but if for whatever reason you really wanted to guide it with the settings, you know, that's an option. Um, and so from here, you kind of have two options. I'd imagine most people just want to export this out, right? You don't really want to play with this in Stager because no one uses Stager. Uh, but if you didn't want to do that, there's also some stuff you can do with compositing similar to Substance Viewer if you used that before. But to show you the first one, so I'll just select my frog, go to File, Export, Scene Objects. And, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. Everyone knows what an OBJ is. But I found USD is actually really cool, too. It includes things like the lighting, you know, both file types will do your all your maps and whatever but usd is also a bit lighter so generally i prefer that but that's up to you um so easy as that otherwise though if you wanted to composite this into an actual image let me i'll select i like this the brown frog so i'll delete all the other ones and so i'll make a camera and I'll change the setting. Okay, that's fine for now. And I'll just kind of place it roughly as if it were a photograph. And if I go to 3D model to image, just like Substance Viewer, it's the same concept of using the model to kind of guide the composition of the artwork. So it's not like you're just loosely text prompting it, but rather like kind of giving it a framework to work from. So I will, you know, this camera's fine. And I'll say frog sitting on a leaf. And uh, I will get rid of the settings I have because I don't want pastel, but I might want, like if I wanted a golden hour with, I probably want shallow depth of field since this is smaller, so it kind of simulates that, the micro photography. And so I will generate. And you'll see it made a couple images of a frog sitting on a leaf. And once you click on one, you can just tab through all the other ones because this section is not generating a 3D model. You can't orbit around, you know, this is just, this is just an image, you know, uh, but I mean, these are, these are pretty cool. So that is the new AI stuff in Stager. I think it's pretty useful because it's already in the Substance collection. You don't have to have this other website subscription app or something. 
Um, so super useful, especially if you're like a concept artist or something that needs to adorn scenes with little knickknacks and frog decorations or soda cans or whatever small props, you know, rather than, you know, the hero item of your scene. I think this is really helpful. So hope that helps.